Good evening, lads. Underground Ross here. Oh, just got, just got back from flying over Europe and the like. Been around. Being an airman's not easy these days. You might say I'm the underground air patrol. But welcome, everyone. Today, we are going to find the bastard. <laughs> yes. All of our troubles, so many it seems, are caused by the work of bastards. And it is our job to go out and find them. And today, we're going to be finding some bastards uh, back in 1972, there was a group of bastards that stood out among bastardhood itself. In 1972, excuse me, I have to go underground, you see, because it's happening again. We're going to find the bastards. We are focusing in laser point to the critical moment in USA history. Hello, today's bastard hunt takes us to 1972 America. They have a president called Richard Nixon. Now, uh, Nixon was, he was kind of, <laughs> he was a hard president. Nixon was honorable mention for a bastard in any conversation, but he was not the bastard we're looking for here. However, he did play a pivotal role, as he would for bastardhood uh, throughout his entire reign. But Richard Nixon was a man who collected bastards. They seem to flock around him. And perhaps that is why the bastards we're looking for made damn sure that he was president. Because he had a mission, a promise to deliver. That is our belief. What happened in 1972? Well, to make a long story short, he took the top currency of the world, the only economy that did not get destroyed in World War II was America, and they took full advantage in the post-war boom. But that was running out. They were having recessions. Marshall Plans, Korea was developed. These bastards had big plans. But as always, there seems to be some little bubbles. And always, every time, you can follow the money. Because the money and the bastards are always one lickety step at the most apart. And today's bastards was about money. In 1972... Richard Nixon took America off the gold standard. Something a Democrat might have done, but not Richard Nixon. But he did. Because some bastards made sure he did. And those are the bastards that we're looking for. There's quite a few. You might want to get you a nice cold drink because this is a chapter in bastardhood that any bastard must watch. Now, before we start today's bastard hunt, I'd like to take a moment to explain something to you. This isn't fun and games. These bastards are bastards. We very much want to find out who they are. And we will. 
Now we have a podcast called Bastard Hunt as well, and most of our work has been done in that fashion, uh, podcasting, you know that. So we can get into more detail in the podcast and share a little more of the nitty gritty with you, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. But these videos are short, they're time restricted, and that's just the way it is. But to find the bastards that we're looking for, we're going to have to do a little digging because you see the bastards we're looking for, like me, wear a mask. They're hard to spot. They're not in the history books even. No. These bastards, like me, are hard to identify. Think about that. What bastard wants to be pointed out as the bastard he is? <laughs> you gotta go back to Napoleon's days. Yeah. You gotta go all the way back to Napoleon because the bastards that beat Napoleon, those bastards started World War I, World War II, and are still in charge today. And those bastards had a big event in 1972. And we're gonna tell you all about it. But we really will have to go back to before 1972, 10 years earlier, in 1962, America had a president who was shot, John F. Kennedy. And interestingly enough, on that motorcade, there were several people in the same motorcade that Kennedy was shot that were in the Nixon administration. And one of them was in the department of the Treasury. Yeah. Governor of Texas. Good old boy. Friend of LBJ. We'll talk about him and we'll talk about some others. But they weren't really the bastards we're looking for. They were just doing their little duties, you see? So this may take some digging. But the bastards made a big move in 1972. They thought, correctly so in many ways, that their plan for world domination needed a jump start. And they decided that they're gonna spend money to throw at every problem and then bribe every guy with money. You can't go back in it with gold. So they had a post-war plan and now they had a mature plan in the 70s, very much matched today's time. The events are similar. Why? Because these cats work in cycles, you see. Because everything is a Ponzi scheme, a little game. And sometimes we have to upset the board and we feel like Today could be, this time, could be a time for a major event because they're losing the game today. We'll tell you much more about it in the next video where we'll go into great detail about what we found out in 1972, the last time the last time it took the, the gold standard off, not the first, and possibly wasn't really that important, but I, we think it was because that changed the money and it changed the money to the system that we live on today. So it's going to be very interesting, but we can't do that in one of these little short videos. Uh, check our podcast out, Bastard Hunt where we spend most of our time looking 
four bastards. Now, we're going to tell you a little bit about the 72 thing on this video because there was a lot of low-hanging fruit. And we think it's relevant to today's time as well. So stick around, and I'm going to go back to 1972, Richard Nixon, and USA doesn't back their currency anymore. Well, to understand America in 1972, you have to understand that it was a very, uh, very strange time. The mid 60s, uh, all the rioting and all the things that some of you young cats might be aware of was pretty, pretty hectic time to be alive. Uh, you had to. The Beatles, you have Woodstock in 69, but all that was over. Now you've got 1972. The shine had worn off the post-war boom. Think about it, all the post-war boom babies born when the soldiers come home. Caused a big generation of youngsters. They were all 18, 19 years old and the, and the like in the youth movement. And President Nixon was paranoid. Paranoid if he was anything at all. It got him in trouble with Watergate. It was his undoing, no doubt. And paranoia, there's not much worse than a paranoid bastard. And Richard Nixon was definitely paranoid. He was definitely a bastard. But again, he was not the bastards we're looking for. Because Richard Nixon would never have taken America off the gold standard. He was politically in trouble. <laughs> he was in trouble. His re-election seemed to be a cakewalk. But being the paranoid bastard he was, Richard Nixon, well, he always overreacted. He thought, in his own mind, that some people were making money off the American dollar unfairly. And if they were doing that, they would be paying quite a penny. The currency was backed by gold. And it wasn't really that Nixon worried about America losing money. He just didn't like who was making it. So Nixon was that kind of guy. He was that kind of bastard. But the bastards we're dealing with are way ahead of the bastardhood of Richard Nixon. And it's the names and the addresses we're going to get into in the next video. But we're going to tell you at least this much. The power structure the bastard structure that began in Napoleon today that basically invented world wars and got the settlement just the way they wanted. These guys seem to be able to do a lot of things that you and I can only imagine. But we came up with a theory of how to approach it. Well, we came up with a, a theory that um, the way to look at it, you have to go in reverse, not necessarily reverse absolutely, but reverse in logic. The way they think, sometimes you have to think outside of the box because they think possibly more long-term than we do and there are reasons for that we'll get into believe me uh, these may not be ordinary people we're dealing with and that's some of the things we were going to get to but for now we're going to deal with bastards of the flesh that we know that bleed even though they may be other bastards as well we're going to find the bastards that made our lives the miserable hell that they're trying to make it to be. They've been very successful at it. You have to give them that. Yes. 
they have been very, very good bastards. And served bastardry quite proudly, but we can be bastards too. And fighting fire with fire sometimes is your only option. But we don't fight fire with fire as much as we fight the problem with logic and research. And remember, backwards thinking can only lead to a backward civilization.